Hello everyone, this is CircuitPython weekly meeting for Tuesday, January 17th, 2023. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. Uh, my name is Liz, uh, I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. And CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit. So if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to the adafruit.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the hashtag CircuitPython-dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday. Uh, as yesterday was MLK Day in the United States, so today we are meeting on a Tuesday. Uh, we also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you would like to receive those notifications, ask us to add you to the at CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There is a notes document to accompany the meeting and recording. The notes document contains timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to view only a parts of the video that interest you the most. The meeting tends to run 45-60 minutes, so this gives you the option to skip around. After each meeting, we post a link for the next meeting's notes document in the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages, find the latest notes doc, so you can add your notes for the following meeting. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can leave hug reports, status updates in the document for us to read during the meeting. This meeting is held in five parts. First part is community news. This will look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a preview of our Python on Microcontrollers newsletter. Second part is the state of CircuitPython, libraries, and Blinka. This is a statistical overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by numbers, separate, for, separate from what we're all up to. And the third part is hug reports. Hug reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing, taking time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. Fourth part is status updates. Status updates is an opportunity to sync up on what we've been up to, take a couple of minutes and talk about what you've been doing in the last week since the last meeting, and what you'll be up to over the next week until the next meeting. And the fifth part is in the weeds. In the weeds is an opportunity for more long form discussions. These discussions can come out of status updates or be something you've identified ahead of time as long as too long for status updates. And that covers how the meeting will go. And with that, we're gonna go to community news. And the big community news is CircuitPython in 2023 let the devs know your feelings. Uh, so as the year starts, CircuitPython development team would like to take some time to share their goals for the CircuitPython in 2023 and beyond. Just like past years, and we have links to 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022, they'd like everyone in the Python and hardware community to contribute by posting their thoughts to a public place on the internet by Wednesday, January 18th, 2023, and that is tomorrow. Uh, there's a few ways to post. You can do a video on YouTube, a post on the CircuitPython forum, a blog post on your site, a post on Mastodon with tags, hashtag CircuitPython and hashtag CircuitPython2023, a gist on GitHub. Uh, they wanna hear from you. When you post, please add hashtag CircuitPython2023 and email CircuitPython2023 at adafruit.com. Let them know about your post so they can post it on the Adafruit blog. And posts can cover any topic related to CircuitPython. Uh, there's a suggested list in the Adafruit blog post uh, and also includes any suggestions or comments related to the uh, Python on Microcontrollers newsletter as well. Uh, and then other highlights from the newsletter this week were what to expect from the Raspberry Pi Foundation in 2023. Um, and then there's also Project of the Week, which was uh, Castle in the Sky, Lupita Stone. Um, Castle in the Sky is an iconic animated film by director Hayao Miyazaki, uh, set in the fictional late 19th century it follows the adventures of a boy and girl who are trying to keep a powerful crystal from an army uh and steve kasuya has recreated part of the movie in the form of a mysterious black stone with engraved glyphs when a crystal passes over it it lights up strings of glyphs it uses raspberry pi pico programmed in MicroPython, and it looked very very cool uh, so the uh circuit python Weekly newsletter is a CircuitPython community run newsletter emailed every Tuesday, so it already went out today. Um, contribute your own news or project, edit next week's draft on GitHub. You may also tag a tweet with hashtag CircuitPython on Twitter or email cpnews at adafruit 
CircuitPython.com. Uh, and with that, we're going to go into the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka. Uh, so overall, uh, there were 35 pull requests merged uh, by 24 authors, uh, 12 reviewers, and 30 closed issues by 11 people, and 20 opens by 16 people. Uh, and next, we're going to go to Dan with the core. Okay, thank you, Liz. Thank you. Okay, in the core of CircuitPython, uh, we had over the past week, we had 11 pull requests merged by 10 authors. Uh, there were four reviewers. Uh, new reviewers, re new contributors I note, I think, are Connor Burns. And we've right, right now got um, 21 open pull requests, of which one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine are drafts. And um, so they're hanging out because we're still not sure whether we're going to merge them or they need further work. Um, there were 13 closed issues by seven people, nine opened by eight people, which is great. A net of four uh, issues closed. We've got 590 open issues. Those are broken down by milestone. Um, there are no pending issues for the 7.3.x release. We've got seven issues we want to deal with before the 8.0 release. We've got 36 issues which are nominally assigned to 8xx, which would be fixed uh, either post 8.0 or maybe pushed to 9.0 depending on our schedule. Um, we've got 20 open issues that are tagged with a library. Um, 50, 515 are long term. Those are both enhancements and maybe minor bugs or inconsistencies. There are seven issues that are marked su mark support, which means they may not really be a bug. And there are four open issues which are third party, which means that uh, we're depending on something that's out of our control to be fixed before we can close that issue. And there's one issue that uh, needs to be triaged and has not been assigned a milestone, or at least it wasn't out of, out of, as of Sunday night. And that is it for the core. Thank you very much, Dan. Uh, next, we're going to go to Katni for the libraries. Thanks, Liz. So this applies to all of the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries, um, which is everything that starts with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore. Or uh, as well as our community bundle um, and our cookie cutter, and I think a couple others as well. Across all of those repositories, we had 22 pull requests merged from 13 authors. A few names that I'm not familiar with are Greatest Gatsby, Vladak, Jan Delgado, Butter, and Rick Sapasap. Um, thank you to our, our new contributors, and thank you obviously to all of our. Uh, consistent contributors, and we had nine reviewers. Um, in terms of timing on those merged PRs, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, 10 days and older, and um, three of those are over a month old. So it's good to see that we're still getting through older PRs and keeping up with our current PRs. And that leaves us with 35 open pull requests. We had 17 issues closed by five people and 10 opened by eight people, which is excellent. And that leaves us with 596 open issues. 88 of those are labeled good first issue. If you're interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, check out circuitpython.org contributing. You'll find all of this information and more, including a list, the list of open pull requests and the list of open issues by um, repository. So if you're interested in contributing uh, by reviewing, check out the open pull requests. If you have the hardware, test it. If you don't, um, check out the code. See if you see anything that looks a little bit weird or something misspelled or indentation, et cetera. And leave a comment and let us know what you did. And that's super helpful. Um, and if you get comfortable with that and you're interested in continuing, we can talk about leveling you up to our review team. Um, if you're interested in contributing uh, code or documentation, check out the open issues. Find one that speaks to you and uh, leave a comment that you're working on it and let us know. And if you need any help, we're always available. Um, if you're new to everything, Good First Issue is a great place to start. And uh, we have a guide on contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub, so don't let the process intimidate you. 
we are all also always available in Discord to help out. So um, we want to make sure that you can contribute in a way that works for you. Uh, in terms of Library Pi PI weekly download stats, uh, over the last week there were 98,985 Pi PI downloads over 306 libraries. And in the notes is listed the um, top 10 for uh, the top 10 repositories by PyPI downloads. Um, the top four-ish are almost always there, but the bottom six seem to move around and change, so it's always a little bit interesting to see. Uh, in terms of library updates in the last seven days, we had a number of updated Adafruit CircuitPython libraries, um, but uh, we also now have our community libraries listed here, and there was one new community library, JLED CircuitPy by Jan Delgado, and two updated uh, community libraries as well. And all those updates are available in the notes if you're interested. And that's where we are at the libraries. Thank you very much, Katni. Uh, I will be reading Blinka today. And Blinka is our compatibility layer, layer for CircuitPython on single board computers like a Raspberry Pi. Uh, there were two pull requests merged by one author. Uh, four open pull requests, uh, 87 total open issues. Uh, PyPy downloads in the last week were 23,370. Uh, PyWheels downloads in the last month, 7,889. And the number of supported boards is now at 101. And that is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. And next up is going to be Huggerports. Uh, Huggerports is a chance uh, to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. Uh, I'll start, and then we'll go down the list alphabetically to give everyone a chance to participate. If you're text only or missing the meeting, but have hug reports and notes document, I will read them off as I get to you in the list. Uh, I will start. Uh, I have a, have a hug report for Tectric for viewing PR for the PCA 9548 library that I had, and I'd also like to give a group hug to everyone. Uh, next is going to be C. Grover, who's text only, uh, to GitHub user. Swicano for discovering an issue with the NAU 7802 simple test that led to finding a convergence cycle ready register flag timing error. Uh, to Tanut and Tectric for help with Git to rename a community bundle library folder. And next is Dan. Okay, hold on, scrolling. Okay. All good. <laughs> uh, thanks to Scott for a discussion we had about problems with uh, ES, ES expressive network sockets. And I successfully fixed that, I hope. And thanks to Katni, who has been, um, you know, we have a notes document here. We also have notes documents for internal meetings and Katni has been handling those internally. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Dan. Uh, next is David Glau, who's not speaking, uh, has hug reports for Jepler and Paint Your Dragon for the work on Pico as a DVI coprocessor. Uh, and then the Foamy Guy and Anic Data for stream and work on the network stack. And then next is DJ Devin. Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, I have a hug report for Foamy Guy for some really tough sledding this week with the WizNet library. Uh, for the Ethernet Featherwing, um, dealing with network stack issues, uh, it's very complicated. Uh, a hug for JP to, to JP for an excellent episode on single and double click timing examples with Debouncer, which has been needed for quite some time. It's filled a gap there. Um, yeah, they do exist, but that one was particularly good. Also an amazing guide on building a 16-step drum sequencer, which is obviously, I'm kind of biased. I think that's kind of amazing. Uh, a hug to, Lee, to, Lee, to Liz for another great vlog episode on CV and MIDI. Congrats on designing some PCBs, and I always look forward to watching your project videos, and also thank you for hosting the meeting. Uh, to C. Grover for continuing to improve his work on palette shaders and graphics projects. The stuff he's doing with palette shaders is very complicated. Voodoo, magic, really cool stuff. Um, so big hug to C. Grover for continuing his efforts on that. That's it. Great, thank you so much. Next is going to be Foamy Guy, who I'll be reading for. Uh, GitHub user E28ETA for watching along with my live streams, working on the Ethernet library, and jumping in to submit a contribution of their own for an improvement to one of the examples that we discussed and looked at on the stream. 
Hug report to Katni for coordinating with the RTD team about an issue we are facing with example code on docs pages. Uh, Anecdata, Al Harris, David G, Dan J, and anyone I may have missed who all helped me understand some lower level networking details and testing procedures, and then a group hug. And then next is Katni. Hello. All right, first up to Foamy Guy for finding an issue with the library documentation where copying code from a code element was also copying the line numbers. For filing an issue on GitHub about that and working with Read the Docs to uh, sort that out. Um, the Read the Docs, a hug, hug report to the Read the Docs support team for being incredibly responsive, super helpful, excellent to work with, and willing to make changes to over 300 projects to get us up to date. Uh, to Jeff, Tammy, and Keith for some excellent chats. To Alec for adding the community bundle stats to the library section of the CircuitPython daily report. And that's what we use for the state of CircuitPython libraries and Blinka um, in this meeting. To Liz for meeting up to sort out what I should be working on next in terms of product guides. Also to Liz for doing the final reviews on my new guides and guide updates and a group hug. Awesome, thank you. Uh, next is gonna be Keith the EE, who is text only. As hug report for Katni for a lovely conversation about LEDs and finding ways to make LED projects more engaging to an audience new to electronics, and to the community for being fantastic. And then next is Scott. Thank you, Liz. Uh, one quick hug for me for Katni for pointing me to easygift.com last week uh, at the end of the week when I was taking some screen recordings and making some fun gifts. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, and then next is Tectric, who I'll be reading for, has hug reports for Jepler and Carter for some help with a PR to the Adafruit Motor Library, uh, Vladek for the recent PRs in a few different libraries to fix an assortment of issues, uh, C. Grover for more great submissions and fixes to the community bundle, always nice to see a grow of cool new things, and a group hug. And that was hug reports. Uh, next up is going to be status updates. And status updates is our time to sync up on what we're doing. I will start and we'll go through the list alphabetically, give everyone a chance to participate. When I call on you, take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be doing until the next meeting. This is also an opportunity to provide tips and tricks relevant to what people are working on. If the discussion becomes too much for status updates, we can move it to in the weeds. So with that, I will begin. Uh, so I'm starting to work on a robot harp project for Adafruit. It will use a lyre, which is kind of a small harp-esque instrument, uh, and 16 servo motors with a PCA 9685. So it's going to take in MIDI, uh, similar to I built a robot xylophone a couple of years ago now, uh, where solenoid motors uh, kind of automated the playing of the glockenspiel. Uh, this is going to be the same thing, but with a harp. And I'm excited because I've never done something like that with a string instrument. I've only done robot instruments with percussion instruments, so uh, hopefully that goes well. Uh, and then for personal projects, uh, I had some PCBs come in for modular Melody Maker project I'm working on, which is basically a kind of a Eurorack sequencer um, thing uh, that has four inputs, four outputs. Uh, and I made some breakout boards for the ADC and the DAC so that I wouldn't have too much breadboarding going on. Uh, and they came in and they are working, uh, which is always exciting if you've ever done PCBs and you await all that time and then they actually work. Uh, so that's wraps up my status update. And next we're going to go to C. Grover, who is text only. Uh, and a GitHub user found an issue with the NAU 7802 24-bit ADC example that at first glance was a simple fix. However, it revealed a deeper data transfer timing problem regarding setting time and data conversion after a channel change that wasn't documented in the data sheet. A few hours later, the driver and simple example were successfully tested, but it was quite the rabbit hole journey. The Eurorack Precision VCO's PCB design is progressing nicely. Like most all projects, the nice to have requirements spawned a new project idea, a CircuitPython driven ADSR envelope generator with selectable preset voices. ADSR envelopes are to the notes of a musical voice as palettes are to a bitmap image. That sounds really awesome. Uh, next, we're going to go to Dan. OK, thanks. Um, <clears throat> so in the past week, I fixed a problem with expressive sockets that were hanging when used with the HTTP server li library. 
in a certain way, it seemed to be more true when used with um, certain browsers. And the problem was that uh, if you're acting as a server, you can get a new socket. Uh, the accept call will give you back a socket. And internally, we'd set sockets to be non-blocking all the time and do our own timeouts. That's so uh, we have control over the blocking and can do things in the background. And uh, the socket that was returned from accept was not always being set to be non-blocking internally. Uh, I researched another uh, problem that was reported in the past week about uh, problems with USB CDC uh, data dot read, or actually it's not true necessarily just as a data channel, but the idea is that the user was having trouble uh, reading uh, from a particular uh, con uh, connection from the host computer. And it turned out to be an error on the host side. On Windows, you can open a COM port uh, in C-sharp or in the shell language, the PowerShell language, which does not assert uh, DTR, data terminal ready, which normally would be asserted. And that is confusing to USB and caused this problem. There's another consideration about whether uh, if a connection goes down, you should be able to read the remaining characters. And I thought I had like a workaround for that, but it doesn't work at all, probably because of state that tiny USB keeps internally. So, but it's not really worth fixing right now. Nobody's complained about it. Uh, another thing that I did was um, kind of at Jeff Epler's suggestion, I uh, cleaned up a bunch of error messages which would normally tell you that you were passing in something of the wrong type. And um, now it tells you that, and also tells you the type of the thing that you passed in. So it's even clearer about what's right and what's wrong. I reviewed a whole bunch of uh, existing PRs and I'm still uh, heads down working on issues to try to get 800 out. Um, we have, we are seeing crashes um, on ESP32 S3 uh in long-running programs that are kind of mysterious and somebody reported such a thing on s2 this this morning and there's still uh unresolved problem with i2c support on esp32 s3 which i've mentioned many times here and uh it's supposedly fixed in esp uh, version 5 esp idf version 5 but it needs more testing i tried the fix and it didn't seem to fix the problem okay Thank you, Dan. Uh, next is David Glau, who I'll be reading for. Uh, searched and found a European distributor with a Pimeroni Pico DV demo base in stock to replicate Jeff's show and tell demonstration of a DVI coprocessor, now back in stock. Uh, worked on my Circuit Python 2023 and published on the Learn system. Uh, is an update of my Circuit Python 2021 using PT's idea of an RP2040 keyboard mouse and Jeff's RP2040 DVI coprocessor. I recovered my C64 keyboard and a PS2 keyboard. I plan to revisit uh, Jeff's learn guide that is for another very similar Commodore keyboard. And then a uh, personal update. Uh, on Monday, I lost a birch tree in my garden and that makes me a bit sad. And I see that just added the uh, picture in chat and I'm sorry about the tree. That, that also makes me sad. Um, next is gonna be DJ Devin. Thank you. Uh, this week, I work, continued working on the enclosure design for the TR Cowbell. Started printing the second prototype enclosure at 20 hours per section. That comes out to 80 hours of printing just for one full enclosure. I uh, decided to go with a thin intermediary mounting plate for the top. Uh, and if you look at the, the included image, uh, there's two really thin, small sections at the top. One is the the section that's on the actual top enclosure, and then the other is just a base plate for the the modular mounting bracket system. And that way, I you don't have to like reprint the entire top enclosure every time you want to change the bracket design for the interconnects. Uh, so this allows me to explore modular bracket design without having to reprint the entire top section every time. Uh, there's been no progress with the TR Cowbell software beyond what Foamy Guy has done, and there's a link to Foamy Guy's GitHub code for the TR Cowbell, uh, which is, just blows my mind uh, how awesome that is. 
Uh, I plan on rolling his code into TR cowbell, uh, my TR cowbell repo someday. I just haven't gotten around to it. Been so busy with the enclosure and learning Fusion 360. Um, if only guy, if you want to push a PR, I would gladly accept it. I probably wouldn't even have to review. Uh, just push. Uh, I've spent uh, every day for the past two weeks working on the enclosure, and I'm looking forward to a day, which seems like forever. I've been working on this thing um, that I can actually make some music with it. That's it. Thank you very much. It's been nice to see your, your progress with it. Keep going. You got it. Uh, next is Foamy Guy, who I'm reading for. Uh, last week, uh, library PR reviews, mostly WizNet 5K. Uh, struggled a bit, but made progress in the end. Uh, looking into example code docs issue and trying out different versions of Sphinx RTD theme to resolve it. Uh, checking in on the docs pages after RTD updated our projects to behave the same regardless of creation date. Uh, then wrote CP2023 uh, posts and published a GitHub today. Uh, this week, a few more Ethernet PRs to work through, uh, soldering the adapter and try using iSpy display connection for the first time, uh, print a few more Stemma Lego adapter pieces and work on getting it embedded into my table foosball game in a way that doesn't make the ball get stuck, uh, trying out multiple distance sensors at once using the I2C hub that arrived my latest order. And then looking into bus IO in the core to see if there's some way it can return the already initialized spy bus on default pins if user code attempts to initialize it after the core already did it, i.e. for a device with a built-in display. And then next is going to be Katni. Hello. So for last week and yesterday, I got caught up from being out for the holidays, started my CircuitPython 2023 post, Updated the SHT40, um, now SHT40 and 45 guide to include the new SHT45. It's a temperature and humidity sensor. Um, the only difference between the two is that one of them is more accurate than the other. And the only way to tell the difference is to look at the board and see what it says. Uh, I worked with the support folks at Read the Docs to get the theme version updated on all of our projects. Uh, everything before October, everything created before October 2020 was running a very early version of the theme. Um, and I was off yesterday. So this week, uh, a shorter week, obviously. Already got caught up on messages from the long weekend. Uh, no guarantees on finishing my circuit Python 2023 post by tomorrow. Um, I will be starting a template for all of the iSpy I revisions of displays that can be used in every guide and explains the iSpy connector and wiring, etc. We have added a um, ribbon connector uh, bit onto our displays to make it super simple to connect displays to um, microcontrollers using a, a breakout um, or eventually, you know, possibly something built in. Um, and so we want to make sure that the changes are obvious and um, the best way to do that is to uh, include a page that's very similar in all guides, but then I will also be creating a couple of text blocks that are meant for copying into other pages in the iSpy revision display guides, such as pinouts page and overview. Um, and that'll be the the thorough update of, of any given display guide when it has a iSpy rev. And then add all this to one of the display guides, and that is so Liz and I have a canonical guide to work from to update the others, and we'll be working together on that. And I think that's all I've got. Thank you, Katni. Uh, next is going to be Scott. Hello again. Um, obviously out Monday for the holiday. I'm hoping to have more dedica dedicated time this week, although I will do be still be doing some childcare during the day. Um, <clears throat> I did most of my CircuitPython 2023 post on Friday. It includes uh, included testing and doing some screen recording of PyLeap, FileGlider, and code.circuitpython.org, um, both on iOS and Android for the first two. Uh, I want to set aside time each week to do that um, because, as you'll see in my CircuitPython 2023, it's kind of like the headline thing and uh, keeping on top of where those projects are and what they're able to do and, and encouraging people to use them will be important to make that happen. I'm going to finish my CircuitPython 2023 post this afternoon and get it out along with a, a kind of like a 
the summary post for the a couple that I've gotten in. I think Ann and Foamy Guy got got to me, so I'll get those out today as well. I'm trying to remind people that tomorrow, sometime tomorrow is ideally the last day, but if it it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, it was meant to be a forcing function, so if folks want to do it but don't have time by tomorrow, that's totally cool. Um, so let's say on the, at the end of the week is when I'll, I'll wrap it up. Um, I sent out fixes uh, for the start and end element keyword args on like read into and write from, or read from into and write on I squared C and spy and PIO. Um, they now work correctly with multi byte element arrays. So I basically only tested on byte arrays, which only have one byte elements. Um, so start and end will work as expected with arrays now. I also have a fix for sharing the web workflow's MDNS object with the user. So we create one for the web workflow, and now uh, when the user tries to create one, the first one, they'll get a copy of that um, to share, and hopefully the sharing works OK. Um, that's out for review. Uh, I think Jeff's on there, so Dan, you'll want to take a look, because I think Jeff's out all week. And then after that, I'm going to just try to hammer through the rest of the 8.0 fixes so we can get to release candidate. Um, as soon as we can, because I'm ready to, to move on to some longer things and not be bug fixing. Uh, that's it for me. Thank you, Scott. Uh, next is Tectric, who I'll be reading for. Uh, last couple of weeks, lots of PR reviews, looking into ways of speeding up Adabot, which would speed up both the generation of the weekly reports as well the checks done when updating Adabot. Submitted a PR to improve how Adabot checks for new and updated libraries in the Adafruit bundle and a few type annotation fixes. Uh, this week, writing up my CircuitPython 2023 post this evening, still trying to figure out what medium I'll use, but it'll likely be either Mastodon or a GitHub gist. Uh, prototyping a CI update to the test repository to get ahead of some GitHub actions deprecation warnings, and then propagating it to the bundle libraries if successful. Uh, begin working on fixing some older bugs I submitted, Start working on allowing the thermal printer to print images. A pull request was previously submitted, but was not suitable for CircuitPython as it used libraries such as NumPy. And in personal use, uh, starting a new class about sensors should be fun. That does sound fun. Uh, and that was status updates. And next up is In the Weeds. Uh, in the Weeds is an opportunity for more long form discussions that either come out of status updates or the folks have identified ahead of time. If you have any in the weeds topics, please make sure they get added while we're discussing other things so we're not weighing around to see if anyone has topics. Uh, I'm not seeing anything in the weeds, so I will uh, wait to see if anyone adds anything by once again saying that uh, the deadline for that CircuitPython 2023 uh, post is tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, January 18th. Um, so if folks want to get those in so that they can be compiled, I'm sure that would be useful to the folks compiling them. Um, I'm not seeing anything for In the Weeds, uh, so I guess it is time to go into the wrap-up. And this has been the CircuitPython Weekly for Tuesday, January 17th, 2023. Uh, thank you to everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. Video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash adafruit. And the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. Next meeting will be held next Monday, as usual, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. And that is Monday, the 23rd of January, 2023. This meeting is held in the Adafruit Discord, where you can join by going to adafruit.it slash discord. To be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPython Nieces role on Discord. We hope to see you all next week. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, everyone.